Hi, I'm Angela Walters from Quilting is My Therapy, and in this video, I'm gonna show you that Slim is great for stitching in the ditch, straight lines, and making curvy quilting designs. Let's do it. As much as I love quilting with all kinds of rulers, the one I seem to reach for the most is a good basic straight edge. It's not because I'm boring, it's because I like to use it to stitch in the d well, What are you beeping for? I'm, it's not a cuss word, I'm saying ditch. Oh, I guess I'm just one of those crazy people that like stitching in the ditch. I use it to maneuver my way around an area, and I just love how the quilt looks when all those seams are nice and flat. So in this video, we're gonna be talking all about stitching in the ditch. And if you're thinking there is nobody I love enough to stitch in the ditch on their quilt, don't worry. We're gonna talk about making curvy designs with this as well. In the last few videos, I've been showing how to use these rulers on a home sewing machine. That doesn't mean I've lost my love for long arming or making long arm tutorials. I have some in the works and they'll be coming soon, so stay tuned. And all the techniques that we're talking about can be applied on a long arm machine. So if you have a long arm, you can still benefit from this video. I'm gonna use Slim to work on this cute little quilt. It's called Wild and Free by Cut Loose Press and it's gonna be so much fun to quilt. I've basted the quilt with fusible batting. I've got my Aurifil thread ready. Let's get to quilting. And I'm ready to use Slim to start stitching in the ditch and creating some fun dot to dot quilting designs. I'm gonna start by positioning the ruler along the seam that I wanna quilt and I'm gonna place it down and then just move slowly along that seam. So now I'm gonna quilt along this seam and you can't really see it, but there's actually a high side to the seam. It's been pressed to the side, so if I scoot just along that side of it, it should let the quilting sink right into the quilt top. and then along again. Straight lines aren't just for seams. I'm actually gonna create a dot-to-dot -dot design within this triangle. This dot-to-dot -dot design that I put in here is actually one of my favorite to use in flying geese. What I'm doing is starting my quilting at a point, quilting to a spot about a half inch inside the next point, and then going on to the other side. And what that's gonna do is give me a nice design that's not gonna overwhelm this beautiful fabric. In the rest of this color section, I'm gonna actually keep on continuing. I'm gonna stitch along my seams, and then I'm gonna come back and add some fun designs in the fabric. So let's see what that looks like. Now the trick to stitching in the ditch is to not worry if it's not perfect. I'm just trying to get it nice and close. Trust me, when you're done, nobody's gonna notice. And now that I'm here at this next block, I'm gonna go ahead and do that same dot to dot design. But if I do it once, I'm gonna end up over here where I already have quilting. So what I'm gonna do is do it once and then echo back to where I started. And now that I'm back at that starting point, I can continue stitching along my seam to get to the next block. At any point, I could reposition the quilt. If I feel more comfortable moving in a vertical motion, it's pretty easy to reposition this little quilt. Now, if I'm working on a bigger one, that might not be a possibility, but when it is a possibility, I'm definitely gonna take advantage. Now I made it to my point, and I'm gonna go ahead to the next seam. Sometimes that seam is behind the foot, which makes it tricky. And again, that's another instance when I would turn the quilt so I could see where I'm going. Positioning that ruler, and then traveling along that seam. So now that I'm at this point, what I'm gonna do is the same design, that same dot to dot design, that's gonna bring me back to my starting point. comes to stitching in the ditch, I'm often asked, do I quilt around the whole block and then fill it in? Or do I fill in the block first and do the stitching in the ditch? Well, as you can see, I do a little bit of both. Sometimes I quilt the block while I'm stitching in the ditch. It just really depends on how I'm working my way around that quilt. And now I'm just gonna finish up the rest of these four geese right here.
And now I'm back to where I started, but I still have to fill in these blocks right here. And what I'm gonna do is a variation of this dot to dot design. I'm still gonna go from point to point. The only difference is I'm gonna do it within this little triangle, touching here, not touching there, but touching here. And that's gonna help frame this block, quilt in this area, but it's also gonna help me move around the quilt. Do you remember this block? Remember how I only did one line in it? Well, it just so happens I can use that second echo line to get over here so I can continue along this side of the flying geese. So I'm gonna add another line now. And now that I'm over here on the other side, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing in these triangles. And I'm liking how this first section looks. Those dot to dot designs really frame the blocks, but I think in other sections, I'm gonna try some different variations. So in this section, I think I'm gonna do a little echoing in these triangles that frame the blocks. Now echoing is just quilting a line inside a previous line. Anytime I need to start a new line of quilting, I'll hold that top thread, I'll put the needle down and up, and that's gonna grab that bobbin thread for me. So if I can grab onto that, now I have the two threads on top. So if I, go ahead and take a few stitches in place. It's gonna help kind of secure that line of quilting. And then when I come back later, I'm gonna give it a little trim flush with the quilt top. So first along the seam. Now since there's about a quarter inch in between my needle and my foot, I'm gonna just travel over until my foot is touching that seam. That's gonna help give me my guide on that side. I could position the ruler right here and quilt my echo line, but I do prefer to work from the left side of the foot. So I'm gonna make sure that my ruler is running straight with my seam. And that's where these guidelines come in handy. If I take one of these black guidelines, I can place it along this seam right here, and that's gonna let me see that it's staying nice and, and straight. So it's along that one, this one's going nice and straight and then I'm just gonna travel along and echo the side of that triangle. Repositioning, and continuing on. And then, now I'm at this edge. I'm not gonna break thread though. I'm gonna backtrack, track along that line I previously quilted, and then go ahead and do my diamond shape in here to do the same on the other side. There we can see that echoing along the side. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. And there we go. I love how it has the same shape. It's really enhancing that flying geese block. So basically I'm using the stitching in the ditch as a way to get where I need to go next. That's gonna help me keep the quilting efficient and help me avoid starts and stops, which is always a really good thing. Now I'm gonna go ahead and finish up this section and we'll see what it looks like. And there's the whole section. It doesn't look incredibly different, but I like how that slight variation really enhances that shape. Now you may be wondering, couldn't I just use a walking foot to get those straight lines? And you definitely could. But what I love about rulers is I can quilt straight lines, but then when I wanna do some curvier designs, I can just set my ruler aside and go right into free motion quilting, which is what I'm gonna do here. In this triangle, I think I'm going to do a continuous curve that works its way across. I think that will look fun. Because just doing straight lines can get boring. Now I'm gonna go ahead and finish up the rest of this section. And another section done. It looks kind of wild since they're changing directions, but I think it looks fun. I'm gonna take a break from the straight line quilting and do a fun border treatment. Now I designed Slim to be a great basic straight line ruler, but I also added a curved edge, and this makes for a really fun border treatment, especially in a smaller border like this. Now let me show you why I love these markings so much. First of all, since they're black and white, when I'm in the darker fabric, I can see the white markings. And when I'm in the lighter fabric, I can see the dark markings. And that means no matter what color fabric, I'm gonna be able to see it. 
And I'm also gonna use these two, the black lines here, to line up with my seam. And that's gonna keep my quilting straight to the border, which is what I want. Now I'll quilt around this and work my way around the, along the border, but then I'm gonna come back and add even more. So going along here. Along the side. And you can see there's my first little curvy line. Now it looks basic now, but wait until I show you what it looks like when it's all finished. I'm leaving the needle in the down position. I'm gonna position my ruler and then I'm gonna quilt along. And now I have two and I'm gonna keep going along the side. I have the first border. So I was able to fit five in there. That looks good. Now, normally, if I wanted to quilt just one row, I would have extended this last one out so that it came all the way to the end. But I know that I'm gonna quilt another row and I'm gonna offset them to make a cool design. So I'm gonna go ahead and just travel here and then do my next row. Now I'm gonna quilt another row of this same shape, except I'm gonna make them a little shorter. I want them to be offset and not even quite the same height. I think it's gonna give it a fun look. So I'm gonna position it here, but instead of putting it on the third line, I'm gonna slide it down so that it's shorter still and quilt it that way. And I like how the border will have a little curvy element to it, which will offset those nice sharp points of the block. So here you can see the first part, and I'm gonna keep doing that along that row. When I run out of space, there's not room for another one, I'm gonna travel over and look how fun that border is. I think it looks fun how they're different heights and how they're offset just slightly. So what I'm gonna do is continue around this whole border. I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. And I finished the border around the whole quilt. Now I just need to finish up the center and I'll show you what it looks I like. I just love working on small projects. It's awesome finishing a quilt so fast. I love how the quilting highlights that awesome Tula Pink fabric. You know she's a favorite of mine. And I had so much fun trying the ruler out in a bunch of different ways.